All right, in this video, we're going to understand how to draw diastereomers and enantiomers, understand the definition of those terms, how to draw or identify them, and then understand the relationship between these, these pairs of isomers, understand their chemical and physical properties. So let's start with enantiomers, okay? So enantiomers are one of a pair of stereoisomers that are non-superimposable mirror images, all right? And the best example we have of this is really our hands. Our right hand and our left hand are basically a pair of enantiomers. If you think about your hand, your right hand is a mirror image of your left hand. If you try to put them on top of each other, they're not superimposable, right? So our hands are our best example. Let's draw sort of an organic molecule here. Right, so here we have 2-butanol, right? This has one stereo center shown in blue, right? And I've drawn the OH coming towards you, which means that the H is back, all right? So to draw its enantiomer, it's pretty simple. We just have to switch, we just have to switch two groups. So instead of having the OH towards you and the H back, I simply switch that to draw the OH back and the H towards you, all right? So these are basically um, enantiomers. They're a pair of enantiomers. Now there's two ways to draw this. You can switch the stereo center or you can draw the mirror image of the molecule. So I'm gonna take this original molecule here and we're gonna pretend that's a mirror. So I'm just gonna draw the mirror image of this. Okay, so this molecule here, I've drawn its mirror image. So you see now the, the methyl is on the right side here, where here it's on the left. So if I take this molecule and do a flip, like a pancake, right, then if I kind of put my hand underneath it and flip it, then that the methyl was on the right, now it's gonna be on the left, and that OH was towards you, the OH will now go back. So you see that's exactly the same molecule as this. So to draw an enantiomer, two ways, right? You can either just draw it the same way and switch the two groups as we did here, or you can draw its mirror image. And these molecules are exactly the same thing. They are identical, all right, pretty simple. Let's just do another example where we have more stereocenters. All right, so I'm gonna take this molecule here. We'll put a chlorine going towards me. Let's put a methyl group going away, and then we'll add a bromine going towards me, okay? So obviously it's implied that there's hydrogens here. Let me draw those implied hydrogens in an H back, an H towards me, and an H back. So if I am asked to draw its enantiomer, right, all I need to do is I can draw the same molecule. Instead of having the chlorine towards me, I can put the chlorine back, which means the H is towards me. Instead of having the methyl back, the methyl can come towards me, which means the H is towards me and then we put the bromine back. So this is the molecule. These are enantiomers. There's, they're a pair of enantiomers, okay? And again, I don't need to draw the hydrogens in. They're implied, right? But if you want to, that H is towards me, that H is back, that H is towards me, okay? Or the other thing you could do is draw the mirror image of the molecule I'm drawing the mirror image here, right? Chlorine, methyl, bromine. So this is the other way to draw that molecule. So if I select this and just move it over here, right? These molecules are exactly the same thing. So if I take this molecule 
and think of it like a pancake. I go underneath and I flip it on its side, right? That chlorine will go back. The methyl will come up towards me and the bromine will be back. And you can see that these are exactly the same thing. So all of these molecules here are identical, right? They're all identical. So there's two ways to draw the enantiomer. Change every stereo center, right? Or draw its mirror image. Um, let's talk about, and that's what we see here, draw the mirror image or switch all stereo centers. All right, so now let's talk about how to draw diastereomers, okay? Diastereomers, all right? Diastereomers are a set of stereoisomers that are not enantiomers, okay? And how we draw them is we're going to switch one or more, but not all stereocenters, all right? So the first thing we see, if we have a molecule like this that only has one stereocenter, okay, this cannot have a diastereomer. There's no diastereomer for this. So we have to have, we have to have more than one stereocenter, okay? Because if I change this one stereocenter, I've changed them all, that would make it an antimer, all right? So if we draw a molecule here, let's put a chlorine towards me, a methyl back, and a bromine towards me, what would a diastereomer be? A, how could we draw a diastereomer? Well, there's lots of diastereomers for this molecule. I could change one stereocenter, so I'll just change the chlorine. I'll make the chlorine go back and then keep everything else the same. So that's one stereocenter. I could change the chlorine back and the methyl, but keep the bromine exactly the same. That's a diastereomer. I could change the chlorine to go back, the H is up. I could leave the methyl and then I can move the bromine, switch the bromine to going back. Again, that is a diastereomer, okay? I could change just the methyl, right? So keep the chlorine, switch the methyl to going back, make the bromine go back, or keep the bromine back. Again, all of these are diastereomers to our original molecule. Okay, so to draw one, we change one or more, but not all of the stereocenters. And that's how you can identify if you have a diastereomer, all right? Uh, pretty straightforward. Let's talk a little bit now sort of about physical and chemical properties. So let me just draw a little chart here. So if you're looking at two molecules that are diastereomers, they, those molecules, have different physical and chemical properties. They are different molecules, even though they're stereoisomers. So what's different? The melting point is different. The boiling point is different. Solubility is different. They are different molecules in every way, okay? They react with compounds at different rates, solubility, everything is different about diastereomers. They are completely different, all right? Enantiomers, um, they are unique because they have identical physical properties. They have identical physical properties. So their melting points, their boiling points, their solubility, that is all exactly the same, 
all right? What's different is how they rotate plane polarized light. And what's interesting about that is that's actually how we identify if you have one enantiomer or another. You um, basically, if you've heard of polarized sunglasses, you can take light, polarize it into a plane. And if you shine that light through a solution of one enantiomer, it will rotate, one enantiomer will rotate it to the right, the other enantiomer would rotate it to the left, all right? So they rotate plane polarized light in opposite directions, in opposite directions, all right? And that's how we actually identify them. So if you make a new compound, a single enantiomer, you can use a polarimeter, that's the instrument that shines plane polarized light through a solution of it, and it could rotate it 30 degrees clockwise. Its enantiomer would rotate, rotate it 30 degrees counterclockwise. The other thing about enantiomers is they have identical physical properties, okay? But these compounds are different in chiral environments. Okay, so that means if I have a, a, an enantiomer interacting with another compound that has a stereocenter, they will react differently. And the most important thing for us to know that is that our bodies, our bodies are chiral. Our bodies are chiral. So as humans, we're made up of organic molecules, and those organic molecules have stereocenters. They're chiral molecules. So diastereomers are always going to be different. Enantiomers have the same physical properties, but they'll, they're different when they react with our bodies. So they'll, if you take one enantiomer as a drug, it, the other enantiomer will have a different physiological response. Okay? So one enantiomer could um, uh, cure a headache, and it, the other an enantiomer might do something completely different, okay? They're going to smell different, all right? Enantiomers smell different because the receptors in our nose are chiral. They will taste different, right? Again, the receptors in our tongue are different. Because our bodies are chiral, enantiomers act as different compounds, different molecules in our body, okay? So they have identical physical properties unless they're interacting with chiral environment, basically our body. So they will have different physiological responses, they will smell different, and they will taste different. And that's the same for diastereomers too. They will taste different and smell different and have different physiological responses because diastereomers are different compounds in every way. Enantiomers have identical physical properties, but they are different when interacting with our body.